Thank you. Would you pray for us this morning? I have the Father, we're praying to the day for your time of the Lord. And I thank the Lord that's so encompassing. Sometimes we get so caught up with ourselves and all the things that we can find wrong with ourselves until we don't see the graciousness of the Lord and that total acceptance that you bring to us. So help us to realize as we walk each step through this coming week that we realize that we are precious in the sight of our Lord and that he is walking with us talking with us, guiding us, yes. and leading us to greater things in him. Yes. There's not a single thing that he is not there in the midst of our lives with. So it doesn't make any difference whether you have five or six children or people that are living in your house and it seems overwhelming at times or whether you're all by yourself. God never, ever leaves you. Yes nor forsakes you. He is constantly with you, and you are prized in his sight. Thank you, Lord, for that kind of love, because there is no such love to compare with that. Bless this Bible study. Bless each woman, Lord. You know their needs. You know their individuality. And you know those that are not here today, but are also part of this group, and be with them where they are. And might they sense the presence of the Lord and know that they are greatly loved. You know what the future is for this Bible study, Lord, and we pray that you will work in each and every heart. Draw us all closer to you, and might we have an impact on the lives around us to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless, guide, walk with us, talk with us, and fill us in these desperate days when we are so isolated from each other and supposedly not to get in contact with other people, Lord, might we sense a freshness of dwelling with the Holy Spirit and all that you have for us. Bless this Bible study. Bless its leaders. Bless each person that's here. And then might we walk out of these doors and touch other lives for Jesus Christ and bring them to a deeper relationship in love of the Master himself. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Louise. I love it when she prays. All right. Okay. I do. I really do. All right, is my hair okay? <laughs> I'll tell you, you guys inspired me this morning. I I got so excited. It was really hard for me to be quiet because I just wanted to start running and teaching. Are you, are you calling me? Oh, yeah. Okay. She's just get over in the middle. She doesn't like me wandering while we're taping. All right. So, yeah. So, as many times as I have read Genesis 1, I thought I knew everything that there was to know about Genesis 1. Do you feel like that? Have you read it a few times in your life? But you know what? There were things that I discovered in this, in this passage that I have never seen. For example, that, that whole thing with, with God counting numbering the stars. That blessed me. It, that I've never seen that before. The 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 thing about um about time that out of out of eternity, out of the, the coral, vast course of eternity, that on that fourth day that the the, the Lord had time set up for that solo. And time is still singing that solo, even today. There will be a time in time that he'll step back and eternity will roll again. But for now, I mean, we are so, this is where we know, this is where we live, we don't know anything else. But there's so much on the other side of eternity and on this side of eternity that we have not yet discovered. It puts a 
us in a little bit of our place doesn't it it puts us in perspective of how big god is and how small we are i'll tell you another thing that i had had not seen that just absolutely blessed me is when god said let there be light that was before the sun and the moon and the stars. Where did that light come from? <laughs> He's the father of light. That blew me away. So when he said that morning, or the evening and the morning were that first day, he was the only source of light for the first, second, and third day. I don't know about you, but that just that just that, that makes me tingle a little bit inside. That he did that. We do, we don't depend on the sun and the moon and the stars. He's the light. Can you imagine what it looks like in heaven? That it's not the sun that's making that place bright. It's him. It's him. Are you guys having the same? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's him. And he condescended to us to create us. I'm reminded of that that psalm that says, that says, who was man that you are so mindful of us? And the son of man, our children, that you would gather us. Yes, yes, absolutely. So today as we go through just a little piece of this, and i got to tell you, I wanted to run ahead so bad, because part of what I talked about last week was the Edenic Edenic Covenant. And this week only covers part of it, because the the rest of it was in chapter 2. And I was a little frustrated by that because I wanted to run ahead and tell you all about the Edenic covenant. Edenic, I will never say that word. Right. The Edenic covenant. But I'm going to have to let Barbara get into that. But I will tell you, um, go with me over to to chapter one and help me out. It was uh, 21, verse 21. And so God created, no, no, it's a little bit after that. God blessed them and, uh, here we go, 27, or 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Kim, can you take that that uh, reverb off a little bit? The, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback here. How's that? Is that better? Is this too loud? Okay. <clears throat> and God blessed them. He created them in his own image, and then verse 28, and God blessed them. God said to them, and this is part of that covenant, he blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I have given you, God said, every plant yielding seed, and on its face of all the earth, and every tree with seed, its fruit, you shall have them for food. To every beast of the earth, to every bird of the heavens, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. That is part of that first covenant God made man, and then he said, okay, you know, I'm giving you a job. This is what your this is part of your purpose. I want you to to take care of everything that I have made. I'm giving you dominion over it. And remember, this is before the fall. This is before Adam and Eve sinned. 
and that dominion, man steps into that place, and it, when he when he sinned, he lost that place. I wish I knew how many how much time lapsed before he was created and given that promise and made that covenant with God, and and to the time where they sinned. Was it years? Was it days? Was it a thousand years? These are questions I have to ask the Lord when I get to heaven. How about you? You got questions? You should probably write them down somewhere that you can take them with you. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it was like the the uh, the husband that um, he said all of the money he needs to go with him. So that when he died, his wife wrote a check and put it in the casket. <laughs> right, sorry. But when, when the Lord created that covenant with man, he stepped into that position, and when he sinned, he lost that position. Now we still have dominion over, over his creation. We're still at the top of that, that food chain. We're still at the top of that list. The Lord gave us that soul in us, that, he, that spirit of God. He gave us that brain that is higher than any of the animals. He breathed his, the breath of God, the, that ruach is the, is the Hebrew word for that, the, the spirit of God, the breath of God. He breathed into Adam. But that plan, that first plan that he had for Adam to rule, you fast forward that all the way after he sinned, after man sinned, you fast forward that all the way to the cross. And Christ said again, I am the second Adam. I am the one that stands in that position of dominion. I rule the earth on your behalf. Are you with me? Does that make sense? So what I wanted to do today, just in a little bit of time that we have, I wanted to talk to you about this word, um, <clears throat> this plurality of what you see in Genesis 1. We talked about it a little bit in, um, in core group this morning, that you have the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that are all three present. You look over in Proverbs, and I think it's verse chapter 8, I think it's Proverbs 8, that talks about um, that, that talks about wisdom being there. Now you and I both know that Proverbs is a poetic book, but it, um, so the concept he's talking about an attribute of God. He puts it into a, a, a female person um, saying, I was there. When God laid the foundations of the earth, I was with him. And you think about this concept of wisdom being with him. It's not a person. And I want to make that clear. It's not a person. It's an attribute of God. That he is all wise. That he is... Um, in fact, let's flip over here. Let's flip The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work. The first of his acts of old, ages I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths I was brought forth. Can you picture? Mm -hmm. Out of wisdom, the Lord spoke. God spoke. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I, before the hills I was brought forth, before he had made the earth with its fields or its first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. Wisdom was there. I love that. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made the skies above and he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits so the waters might not transgress his command. Job says it like this, 
you put the waters and the oceans in place and said, this far and no further you will come. That's why we have beaches. He set it in place. And he marked out the foundations of the earth that I, when I was beside him like a master worksman, I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And just as and if we are created in his image, ladies, we should crave wisdom because it's an attribute of God. Amen? Amen. So back to Elohim, that word in the, in the Hebrew, Elohim. God is God in plural. So I, was, I, rem, I know that the, this thing called the Trinity is kind of hard to understand. I've had folks come to me and say, this is, this is just a concept I am just struggling to get. So I'm, if, if it's OK with you, I'm going to reach way back into my childhood and show you something that, that uh, was shown to me when I was just a kid about the Trinity. A simple A. It's got actually, it, it's, just, it's just an A. It's actually got three parts to it. But one part of it, the, the yolk or the white or the shell, doesn't make the egg. It's the part of the egg. See, we have, a, we have this concept we don't understand, but it's just so simple. With the Trinity, God the Father is like the shell. He surrounds and he protects his own. That is, he is what we see, and the first, the first person of that Trinity that we talk to, that we go to. The second one, the yoke, is a picture of Jesus. He is established. He is the center. He is everything. He's the flavor of our lives. Mm -hmm. He is. He is what everything else is. This is the reason for the egg right here. Without this, you don't have an egg. You got you, <laughs> right? <laughs> he is the reason for the egg, and then the Holy Spirit made it then the Holy the Spirit is the clear, the white, surrounding us, protecting us, surrounding the, the Lord. The Holy Spirit surrounds Jesus. In fact, uh, the Word of God says that he doesn't even speak of himself. He always points to Jesus. <laughs> he is, he is the, the his sustaining fluid. Of that, of that trinity. Now, now ladies, that, is that, I know that's so simple. Is that, is that all right? Actually, very good. Good. Have you ever seen that before? No. It's and just I so simple. And, I, and it was one of those things that I just, when I was a kid, I just went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just kind of, you have to kind of accept it by faith. Um, it's, an egg is not a whole egg unless it has those three parts. And there, there is not. <laughs> he also created us in his image. Now, the, the uh, question that we had talked about that it meant a spiritual connection. It was not necessarily a, a physical thing. You know, we don't, God is a spirit. And I'm not, you know, it talks about his eyes, the eyes of the Lord are upon the earth. It talks about his hand. But I'm not entirely sure it was a physical thing that we are like him and in his image. We like to think that because that makes us more comfortable, right? And when God creates, he created, he created as a master at making something out of nothing. Romans said, he called into being that which was not. 
He made things out of nothing. Now I want to do a little exercise here. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to be a creator for a minute. I want you to create a brand new animal. I want you to think of what you would do to make that animal different from anything that you've seen. You're not creating something that's already been done, you're creating this new. All right, you got it? Got it in your head? Okay, open your eyes. Now let me ask you this question. How many of you made in, what, what, that animal, that new animal, out of parts of other animals? Yeah? Everybody? That's the difference between us and God. God created out of nothing. And we can only see and create out of what we already know and see. That's true creation. Out of nothing. So when we go back to being in his image, I don't, I don't even know what that looks like physically. But I do know what it looks like spiritually. You see, we have three parts in us as well. We are triune. We have the body. Paul calls it a tent or an outer shell. And ladies, one day this body is going to be done. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fall away. It's going to crack, break. Some of us are already that way. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> and it's going to be gone. And then we have the, the yoke or the spirit of God in us. We have that, that presence of God. We have Jesus in us that awakens our spirit. And our spirit is not awake until that happens. That yoke of Jesus in us, Christ in us, is the hope of glory. Christ in us is everything. And then we also have the third part, our emotions, our soul, if you would, that is that is kind of like the, the white of an egg, that it surrounds us, our soul, our emotions, it bubbles up and it comes and goes as, as we, what we feel. We talked a little bit about being toed and cranky. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, a, that's, that's soulish. That's from your emotions. That's why, that's why David said, why are you so downcast? Oh, my soul. Put your hope in God. His spirit, what was alive in him, that yoke in him, had to speak to his emotions and say, come on, come on. We're not going to do this today. Come on, get up, get up. Oh, I touched a nerve. Because as women, we are sometimes guided by our emotions. We're guided by our feelings. Feelings are good. I'm not saying they're bad. They're just feelings. But we are not to be guided by that. Or our body. We are to be guided by Christ in us. Our spirit, the spirit of God, deep calls to deep, and spirit calls to spirit. That is our connection. So, so all of creation, all of creation understands who God is. All of creation knows his name and knows that they were created by him. Man is the one that needs to line himself up, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mankind. I'm not talking about men. I'm saying mankind. People. Mm -hmm. Us. We need to align ourselves with him. All of creation groans in anticipation to the time that he comes back and returns and fulfills the, 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 and makes the, the earth his kingdom again. Yeah. All of creation.
creation in waiting for a time that when time is no more, for eternity. For the Edenic covenant to be restored. All creation groans for that. The omnipotent creator is known. He's revered. He's loved by his creation, by the universe. That's why in the scripture, the created world delightfully displays his power. You've seen it. You've read it. If we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out to him. If the uh, the trees clap their hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like. Oh, I wonder when I'm in a Yeah, in a windstorm. <laughs> I can imagine that. The you trees just clap them. their hands. The hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. The earth quakes and shudders when he speaks. The earth responds to him. At his word, time stands still. The day gets longer at his word. Water gushes from a rock. Fire falls from heaven. Millions of quail for all of a sudden fly into the camp, stamped ready for barbecue. <laughs> At his command, the donkey speaks. Water changes its molecular structure and becomes wine. Viruses disappear at his word. He covers the sun with his hand and makes temporary darkness. Isn't it amazing that he, when he set that sun into space, he knew exactly where to put it and in the distance exactly that we would not freeze to death or burn up. Precision. The oceans obey his limits. He rides upon the winds. In his name, demons flee. In his name, demons flee. Mountains uproot and are moved. Axe handles float. And see water, even water, becomes his platform to walk across. See, we ladies, I love that old song that says, join with all nature in manifold witness to his great faithfulness, mercy, and love. And it makes you want to stand up straight. That he made us in his image. That he cared enough for us to create us, to love us, and then even after the fall, the sin of the Son to die for us. I don't want to miss him. Do you? I don't want to miss him. I want to praise him on this side of eternity. I want to praise him now and honor and revere him now, just like the earth. Join with all nature in manifold witness to his great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Let's pray. Lord, we're in awe of you today. I feel a little bit like Job that after you finished talking to him about all that you had done to, to prepare the earth and to, to create it, And he put his hand over his mouth and he says, I have nothing to say. Lord, we live in a world that fists are raised high in rebellion and rejection of you. And Lord, I, I stand with these women in this room today and we say, no. No. We catch a glimpse of who you are and recognize what you've done for us. And we are grateful. We are thankful. Lord, thank you for that holy perspective today. 
in your name. Amen.